the United States has defended Israel's long-running occupation of the occupied Palestinian territories during a hearing at the International Court of Justice. It comes as Palestinian health officials say the tally of injured and dead in Gaza since the beginning of the war is nearing 100,000. Let's get more and bring in Chris Gunners in our London bureau. He's the former chief spokesman for the United Nations Relief and Aid, Aid and Works Agency for Palestinian refugees. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning, Bridget. Uh, thanks very much for your time this morning. That toll, nearing 100,000 dead and injured, is staggering. Chris, have you ever seen anything like this uh, during your career? Not at all. And I think for Palestinians, it's not been seen since the Nakba. And even at the Nakba, the figures are um, dwarfed by what's going on. Now, the Nakba being the primordial catastrophe that befell the Palestinians in 1948. And to be clear, what's happening is that starvation is taking hold, has taken hold, in the words of the senior most humanitarian in the UN system, who says that 400,000 people are now in starvation. And to be clear, starvation is a slow motion massacre. And those countries such as Australia, who are withholding funding from the United Nations Relief and Works Agency that has 1.2 million people on its food distribution list in Gaza, they are complicit in that slow motion massacre. And I say this more in sadness than in anger, because I think Penny Wong has been quite clear in moving the Australian position towards a ceasefire. But to be clear, that ceasefire has to be unconditional. It is simply disproportionate to make conditional um, upon the resolution, upon this aid um, being restored, um, the idea that UNRWA should do more in terms of proving its neutrality. We in UNRWA have worked tirelessly with all our major donors, including Australia, to show that there is a zero tolerance policy. And that's why the 12 workers who were alleged, and it's not an allegation that's been proven, to have been involved in the 7th of October attacks have been dismissed. So there was no due process. I say to Penny Wong, I say to the Australians, aid must be restored because you are now complicit in a slow motion massacre. Uh, we understand the Foreign Minister did meet with UNRWA earlier this month uh, to get more detail on those allegations and more detail on the investigation. Uh, would you think, Chris, now that enough time has elapsed uh, for Australia to come to a fuller position on whether or not it should resume aid? Well, I say that because there is enormous urgency. Not only is there starvation taking hold, the three criteria, official criteria for the definition of starvation are now pretty much being met in terms of the number of people dying due to um, hunger-related illnesses per 10,000, households facing food insecurity and children facing um, acute malnutrition. Those are all being met. So yes, there's an urgency because for every hour that goes past, more children, more women, more babies, the elderly, the sick, the dying, they are effectively being killed by this slow motion massacre, by this starvation. So yes, I say this, as I say, more in sadness than in anger. Australia has been a very reliable donor in the past to UNRWA. And it's a great shame that on really no evidence, I mean, the American Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has made it clear that the American intelligence services have not been able independently mm. to confirm the evidence put forward against UNRWA, and I would suggest that perhaps Australia hasn't also. So I would say um, resume aid immediately to UNRWA. It's the only game in town in Gaza. The situation is desperate. In Rafa, for example, it was a town of quarter of a million people on the 7th of October. It now has 1.5 million people. That's six times. They are living in tents, many of them without toilets, without medical facilities, without food. I have colleagues in Gaza who are saying to me that their children are going to sleep hungry, crying of starvation. They're coughing up blood in the night. Starvation has taken hold and it's time for the Australian government and others to wake up and to realise that they need to get on the right side of history, which will judge them very harshly. Do Australians really want a government that as a matter of deliberate political choice has decided to inflict starvation on 2.3 million people? I would sincerely hope not. Chris, if aid funding was resumed immediately, what would UNRWA be able to do, uh, especially in Rafa, to start to uh, ensure that food and water and supplies get in urgently? Well, to be clear, there's a war going on and UNRWA has lost 158 
of its workers, and that isn't counting those who were lying under the rubble. But UNRWA has maintained its services extraordinarily, and I pay tribute to the incredible commitment and bravery of UNRWA staff. They are continuing to do some food distributions, though the Israeli authorities are massively restricting the aid going into Gaza. It's well below the 500 trucks per day that was going in before the 7th of October. UNRWA is maintaining seven of its 23 primary health clinics. It's got 1.7 million people inside its various compounds across the Gaza Strip. It is managing somehow to bring a, a, a modicum, a minimum of relief assistance to them. But things are desperate. The hu Secretary General has said that the humanitarian system is broken. And it's broken partly because of the lack of a ceasefire. So first of all, that has to be established. And secondly, because of the aid being curtailed by the Israeli authorities and the defunding by 18 governments, including the Australian government, of course, is restricting aid. And by the way, on the 26th of January, the International Court of Justice issued provisional measures, which included no restrictions on international, on, on, on humanitarian assistance. What did the Australian government do within days of that provisional ruling by the world's highest court? It cut aid to the largest humanitarian organization inside the Gaza Strip, thus in the view of many international lawyers, making Australia complicit in the starvation, but also in violation of the provisional measures and the genocide convention itself, which makes it an obligation on state parties to prevent genocide. It's, it's the clues in the name. The name of the convention is the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide. And I would urge the Australian government, and I'm sure the Australian people listening to this would want their government to get on the right side of the law and to get on the right side of history.